Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new video about how to create a 3D Captain America shield and how to get this 3D model of it for free. This episode is brought to you by Artbeats Express. Create a free account at Artbeats Express Stock Media by subscription and receive complimentary broadcast quality resolution content files. No credit card payments or obligations are required. Click the link for more details. So I saw Captain America Civil War, really liked it, and I thought it'd be fun to talk about how to create a 3D shield of Captain America's in Cinema 40. Or if you just want this model, I got a deal for you. If you head to my Facebook page at facebook.com slash tutorials or Twitter, I'm at Sean Frangella, and follow me on either site and send me a message. I'll send you this model for free that you can use in Cinema 4D, Element 3D, 3DS Max, whatever you use, and I'll toss you a link to download this model just for checking out this video. Or if you want to learn how I made this and how you can make it on your own, let's talk about that. So here I am in Cinema 4D and we have our shield and how this is working is each part is built separately and then we're dropping this Spherify Deformer on it. And what makes it look nice and really three dimensional is a lot of these little details that we can see where we're getting this little bit of beveling here. So let's start building this from scratch. I'll get a new file in Cinema 4D and I want to have a frame of reference for the scale of everything. So I'm going to go to four views. I'm going to click this viewport on the top bar here and press alt V and that's going to bring my viewport attributes. And then I can put a image in the background. If I go to back and I might need to click on that again for it to light up and I'm going to load this image into that viewport, which is a render from the final project. So I can get the proportions, right? So if you download this project file from my link on Facebook or Twitter, this image will be in there if you want to follow along. And what I want to do is use this as the reference for the edges. And I'm going to start by building this out with tubes and my polygon object. So I'm going to get a tube and I can rotate it or go to orientation and put it Z plus. And that's going to come in dead center. We can see the edges. So we actually need to offset that background image just a little because we want everything to be in the center of the world. So we'll just move that again in our viewport settings. And then we can grab our tube and we're going to push the outer radius up to the edge of that and then bring the inner radius to where the red is ending. And if we look pretty close, we can see that the edges here are a little rough. And if we look at our main viewport and press NB for our shading with lines, we can see we don't have quite enough geometry for it to be smooth and we want this to look nice. So rotation segments, I'm going to put up to 200. So we're going to get some nice smoothing and we don't need it to be nearly this tall. So we can actually just grab these little dots right here and that's going to scale this, or we could just bring our height down. Maybe something like 15 will be a good start. And that'll be our first ring. Now we're going to bend this eventually. So we, we need a little bit more geometry. So we're going to add more height segments and that's going to help us later. So there's not just only the edges and then we're going to add fillet caps which will round it a bit too much, but we can take our radius down to one and maybe not have so many segments. And that's going to give us this nice bevel, which is a good start. Now that we have that first one, what we could actually do is just duplicate that by holding command and dragging up and it's going to make a copy in the same spot. And then with this one, we could use it as the white. So same idea. I'm going to look from this view and then take our inner radius down to where that white ring ends and our outer radius. I just want it to be overlapping with the red. We can see they're kind of stacking up a bit. What we want to do if we look in pretty close here is actually just grab that white one and just tuck it in barely just a little bit. And we could even go to coordinates for that one and just push it back in Z one centimeter or maybe even like 0.5. So we'll see, we'll get that nice little offsetting with the edges and we don't want it to be pushed back too much on the other side. So what we can actually do is take our height down. So we could do 14.5 since we're taking off 0.5, or we could even do just leave this in here and put minus 0.5 and it'll compute it for us. And that way it's going to be tucked in there, but not sticking out the back. Now we can quickly do the same thing with the second inner red circle. So we'll just do that, bring the inner radius down, tuck that in, offset it. So we'll put this one at one on Z and just put this at 14 centimeters for height. And then for our main center circle, we're going to start with a cylinder instead of 
a tube because we don't need a hole cut in it. And we'll do the same sort of thing of get that in the center. We could scale that up. Same idea to where it's overlapping. It's way too big now, but we could take the height of that down so it could fit right in. If we want to be exact, we could put that at that same 14 or maybe even like 13.5. So we're going with units of 0.5 and just tuck that in. Now, the main point of this is that there's this star in the center, but I don't just want to drop that on top of it. If we look over at our finished project file and looking pretty close here, we can see that the star has some of those nice little offset details too. So we get some little extra little highlights and shadows when we're hitting it with lights and bending it. So let's do that. What we're going to do to do that is we're going to go up here to our vector objects, grab a star that's going to put this starburst thing in. That's not what we want. There's nothing for sale. We're just trying to make a shield. So what we want to do is grab our star and we're going to put it at five points. It still looks a little off, but the way we can adjust the angle of this is change the inner and outer radius of our star. And we can see that that expands how weighted that angle is. And then we can just rotate that, scale it down to get it to line up with our reference and get it as close as possible. Now to create some geometry on this, what we want to do is drop this into an extrude object. And we can do that really quickly by highlighting our star and then finding our extrude object. And before we press it, holding alt or option and then letting go and bam, that's going to give us a shortcut and automatically drop that in. Now, again, like I said, we don't want this actually just protruding out. That's not what's happening. It's actually cutting in a little bit. So what we want to do is get in real close here and just have this intersect that cylinder a little bit. And to cut that out, we're going to get a bool object and then we're going to put both this extrude and our cylinder in it. And then we just need to swap those and it's going to actually cut out the star from our cylinder in a non-destructive way. So what's nice about this is we can see it's doing that. There's not a lot of geometry on either of these objects. And when we start to bend it with that spherify deformer, we're going to get some problems because our star just has this one cap. But if we turn off our bool, it's non-destructive. So what we can do is first grab our cylinder and we're just going to add a lot more segments. We'll put that at like 200. And then for our extruded star, rather than just these solid caps, which isn't going to give us any geometry under caps, I'm going to change it from type end gons to quadrangles, turn on regular grid and put this down to like two on width. And then we can see we're going to get a lot more geometry. And then when we turn that bool back on, you can see that that actually is applied to how that bool is working. So that's a good start, but it's just a flat disc of a shield. That's not quite what we're going for. So what we want to do is we're going to take all this stuff, put it in a new group null with alt G and we'll just call this shield. And then we're going to put all the parts in another null within that with alt G and we'll call this shield parts. And then I'm going to get this spherify deformer, drop that into our group above the parts. And you can see that doesn't look right at all. But if we pull this back away, now we can see that we're getting what we want. And what we can do is look from one of our side views and actually just scale this down and adjust it. So it's getting that curvature that we want. And on our spherify, we can adjust the strength so we can see it's actually just wrapping whatever geometry you have around this sphere, but we don't want it to be that harsh. It's not that extreme of an arc. So we can turn our strength back down and just move that out a bit. And again, what's nice that all of these are still editable is we can see it. Maybe it ended up a little too thick, but we can take our tubes. Even if we have multiple values, say we wanted to change the height a little on all of them, maybe they're all a little too thick. We could click height and do X minus, let's say five. And that's going to take five centimeters off of all of their original values. You can see our twos went from a height 10 
9.5 and 9. And if we turn off our Spherify, we can see they're still all lining up exactly. So it's a good little tip if you want to use some not too complicated math on multiple objects that have different settings. You do x minus a value and it's or plus a value or a divided by and it's going to do them evenly and then we could just pop on our spherify and tone this down a bit probably to about 60 and just make further adjustments so it's looking like now that we're bending it our star is getting a little warped so we can grab our original star and adjust the inner radius a bit maybe even look at it from here if we want to really line it up exactly and just scale it all down a bit so it's a really cool way to work and kind of combine some basic shapes with deformers and bools to create a 3D shield without making it destructive. If we wanted to quickly texture this, there's some really cool paint textures that we just type in car paint in the content browser. If you're on the studio version, these should come up and we could just take a look at this and really quickly just grab red, white, blue, and this gray and then just drag these to the different tubes and objects. And even though this center star part is all within this bool, we can still texture the extruded star and our cylinder separately. And it's gonna work pretty nicely. And if we look at our final project file over here, you can see you can start adding lights and floors and stuff like that. Or you can integrate this into any of your projects and animate it or put it in VFX. So this was a fun one to put together. I hope you learned a lot. If you want this free 3D model, again, be sure to hit me up on Facebook at facebook.com slash motion tutorials or Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. Follow either of those pages, send me a message. I'll send you a download link and you can start messing with this model, picking it apart in Cinema 4D or bring it into After Effects with Element 3D or whatever 3D software you use. I'll include the C4D file as well as an OBJ so you can bring it into other projects or you can bring it into C40 Lite even if you wanted to. And this one is free, but if you really like these tutorials, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net. And if you want to get more project files, you can click support the show and throw in a couple extra bucks to get other project files from other tutorials. Or if you want to become a regular supporter of the show, you can head to patreon.com slash Sean Frangella where you can also throw in a couple extra bucks to get other project files or throw in $10 a tutorial and I'll give you all of my project files for all the tutorials. That's over 100 now on things like After Effects, VFX, motion graphics, title recreations like this Captain America or Game of Thrones, visual effects. And if you want to keep learning more about motion graphics, Cinema 4D and putting together other film and Marvel inspired 3D animations, be sure to check out some of those other tutorials I have by clicking on those thumbnails where we'll keep learning, talking about more 3D animation, VFX, and fun film stuff. Thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.